Hi there, welcome back to Perbex, Britain's Urban Exploration. Today we are in rural Shanghai and we are going to explore an abandoned science school. I've been in here a couple of times and it is amazing inside here. There's so many things that we are going to see. We're going to have to sneak through this wasteland to begin with and then go through the back fields where everything is dirty and skanky, jump over a huge wall and then be able to try and get inside all of this before the sun goes down. Time is of the essence right now, so we've got to hurry. I can't wait to get back in here. Oi. If you're new to Burbex, Brin's Urban Exploration, be sure to subscribe for great new videos from Burbex, Brin's Urban Exploration every week. Let's go. This place is a little bit tricky to get to right now because it's the end of the summer and things are a little bit overgrown. You can see we're right down by the river right now. It's very uh, fertile around here, let's say. This is the back wall to the school. From the look of this place, it's been abandoned maybe 15 or 20 years. But what I really like about it is that there's just so much stuff left behind. There's things on the chalkboards. There's equipment left behind. It's just a really amazing location. Ah, oh, look. You can start to see the building now. You can see there's a few local farmers. It's the end of the season, so you can see they're burning their crops. Hopefully they're not going to pay attention to me as I climb over the wall over here. One of the reasons that a lot of Chinese cities, especially the rural places, have such bad pollution especially in the autumn, is that they start to burn off the fields and then the smoke from that just drifts into the cities, which can actually make the pollution really bad. I have a little bit of cover here from this maze. It makes me think of that movie with Kevin Costner, Field of Dreams, where all the ghosts come out of the crops. If you build it, he will come. good attitude, you've got to build it. Follow your dreams. So I'm over the wall now. Uh, what's that? Two, three, four meters maybe? Heading towards the main buildings. There's a whole bunch of buildings here. You can see it just behind me. What I'm going to do is go this way and then head to the top floor. A good piece of advice in urban exploration about not getting caught and maximizing your time in a building is head to the top floor first and then work your way down. Also, it has the advantage of it gives you kind of a viewpoint of everything that's going on below you. It's much easier to keep an eye on things from the top. Just some quick advice there. Take a look in one of these classrooms. These classrooms are amazing. It looks like they've turned most of this school into some kind of farm. No. That's a gourd. G-O-U-R-D. Gourd. I've actually just seen a farmer going over his crops. So I'm going to have to go another way around. I hope we can get up there. Let's see if we can spy on him a little bit. see him over there. I couldn't quite get in the way I wanted to get in, but um, I came in over a back wall. There's dogs everywhere making a lot of noise, and I'm afraid they'll attract the attention of the janitors, but this way in seems to be pretty good as well. I don't see any people. Let's go in. You can see this is the countryside. It's right on the edge of Jiading Industrial Zone, so you can see a lot of factory buildings here.
that enormous battle. That building over there is the science block, which is where I really want to get into. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. We're going to have to be super stealth if we're going to get into there. So like I said, there's uh, lots of science labs here, and there's lots of cool equipment. Here we can see Newton, Newton, the guy with that apple on his head. I've got Darwin, Darwin. I think they made Darwin look a little bit too hairy. Maybe the whole ape thing went a little bit too far. They made him look like uh, Dr. Zaius in Planet of the Apes. But the beast could not speak, of course. Thomas Edison. They love Thomas Edison in China. They bang on about him all the time. 99% perspiration, 1% inspiration. I'm getting very sweaty right now, so I've got lots of perspiration. I think I need some inspiration. You can see the farmers have left lots of cloves of garlic out to dry. Chinese people love garlic. In the northeast of China, they'll eat garlic raw. We see like these broken beakers and engines and all kinds of things in here. I love this place. This is my favorite room. The organ room. Look at this. There's some brains. Plastic brains, of course. Here's another brain. Some lungs. I think if it was Chinese people's lungs, they'd be much blacker than that. Chinese people do love to smoke. Look at this brain. You can take this brain apart. See all the different parts inside. This is my favorite. It's the Neanderthal head. They call that Peking man or Beijing man. Like that was a Another species of human that they dug up around Beijing somewhere. Look, and there's all these, like, cross-sections of land and water. Isn't this amazing? That brain is super cool. All right, I have to go into super stealth mode now, because the farmer is down there. Can you see him? I'm up on the roof right now. I have to be super quiet while I'm up here. I think the, the janitor might have caught on that I'm here. He was wearing a blue uniform. Did you notice that? A lot of these guys are like security and janitors all rolled into one. And they kind of take care of these places. But at the same time, they'll grow plants and vegetables here. From the roof here, you can actually see in that direction that this is the Jingdong headquarters for Shanghai. It's like a Jingdong distribution center, JD. And Jingdong is like the equivalent of Amazon in China. Uh, one of the advantages of Jingdong, though, is that you can be assured that the products aren't fake like they are on Taobao or Alibaba. So I prefer to use Jingdong. These are called OHPs. They used to use these when I was a kid. And basically you shine this image up onto a screen. You can see they got a lot of these kind of communist style ones. There's one with Joel and Lai. There's like some communists shaking hands with children. It's a very Chinese communist style. 
This one says, Don't mess about spending money. What are those? These are great. Now look at this one. There's a, a Chinese guy abroad and then he's dreaming of Tiananmen Square. Don't live for yourself, live for your country. Right? Here's one with a monkey jumping on a boat. Oh, look at these tiny ones. They give you all the characters. Uh, that one's like more for wood, water, stone, field, earth. That one's fish, insect. Well, we're lucky because we found an OHP slide of Lei Fong. And Lei Fong was kind of a communist poster child during the 1950s. He was supposed to be like selfless and helped all the children and the old grannies and did all these wonderful things. The thing about Lei Fong is he probably never actually existed. Uh, he was just like written about and they made fake photos and things like that of him doing selfless acts. In China, they actually sing a song about him at schools, which goes, Shui Shi Lei Fong, Hao Wang Yang, which means uh, learn from Lei Fong, he's a good role model. Actually, I think Lei Fong is a pretty shit role model because of the way he died. He was actually standing behind a truck, which was reversing, and he was standing between a telegraph pole and a truck, and he was probably saying, Qing Zhu Yi Dao Chu, Qing Zhu Yi Dao Chu, which is like the computer voice that you hear when trucks reverse in China. He unfortunately got squashed between the telegraph pole and the back of the truck, which probably means that he's not a very good role model when it comes to traffic safety. Shui Shi Lei Fong, Fu Ha Da Bang Yao. Let's keep going now, see what else we can find. I'm getting a little bit anxious now that we're going to get caught. Plus, I think I want that heart. Or maybe the, maybe the brain. The heart or the brain would be good souvenirs. Yes, I know you're not supposed to take things when you're out on urbex, but I doubt anybody else around here is going to take them. Snacking that brain for a long time. It's just been sitting there left to rot. Now it's mine. The canteen is right at the end of that. I think we can get over there. the main gate. This is amazing, there are ginkgo berries everywhere. Um, ginkgo, if you don't know, is actually super good for you. Not the fruit itself, that's actually quite toxic. But if you take the flesh off it, then inside you can find a nut, which looks like this. And when you fry that nut, uh, you fry that nut and eat it. Chinese people put it in soup, for example. Japanese do it too. Um, four or five of these nuts every day. And apparently, you'll live to be more than a hundred. And in Chinese, it's called yinxin, which means like silver almond. And these are actually worth quite a lot of money. And people go around collecting them. The only problem is, 
that the, the soft flesh of the ginkgo berry smells like vomit. And to get it off the berry, to strip the flesh off the berry, is a very, very smelly process. And you'll end up smelling like vomit for a couple of days. It's a really distinctive smell. We're going into the kitchen area now. Uh -huh. It's pretty immense in here. Like we've seen before in abandoned schools, like in the art and design school, which I explored recently. That's been demolished, by the way, but you can still check it out in the link above. There's a lot of these signs, like this one, which say, which means, please speak standard Mandarin, basically. And it's actually pretty tricky to get Shanghai people, especially Jiading people, to speak this language because it's like uh, it, it goes against their natural instincts. It's not really what they want to speak. They want to speak their local language. So uh, that's a bit of a struggle that they have in the Shanghai areas. This bit of hair is driving me fucking crazy. If anyone's got any ideas about how to get her to stay somewhere, I'd love to hear them. Um, I'm just going to try and sneak outside again. You can see over here there are three, oh, four, four trash cans, and they look like little lions, right? But even though they look like lions, they are in fact Pichol, and Pichol is one of the seven sons of the dragon. The thing about the Pichol is that. It can eat things, but it can't shit them out because it's got no butthole. Uh, so that actually represents like saving money because, you know, the peach oil, it can consume the money, but it doesn't shit it out again. Another interesting fact is that in Japanese, peach oil is Pikachu, which you might know from uh, Pokemon. So next time you see uh, Pikachu, he's like, <coughs> it's because he can't poop. He is permanently constipated. Poor Pikachu. Well, there's only one building that I've not been into, and that's the one at the front by the front gate, but I'm pretty sure that's where the farmers live and store all their crops, so I don't want to go over that way. Right now, I have to try and figure out a way out. I think round the back is the best way to go. The way in was a little bit tough. Right, how am I going to get out of here? My feet smell like vomit right now. Well, this has been a really great exploration and I've got my brain in my bag. I can't wait to go back home and give it a clean. It's going to be brainwashing. Yeah. If you like this video, be sure to hit like and don't forget to subscribe to Burbex Brin's Urban Exploration for great new urban exploration videos every week. Let's go. Shazam. How am I going to get down there?